Chris Doyle was uh, let go, reached a separation agreement technically, $1.1 million buyout at Iowa last year. Allegations of racist remarks and belittling of players emerged. Chris Doyle emerged in Jacksonville as the new director of sports performance, Peter Urban Meyer, who has a little bit of a history of being around some coaches and some players that may or may not have been involved in some behavior that may or may not be regarded as acceptable in a civilized society. I just look, I know Urban Meyer's got a ton of equity now in Jacksonville and they've handed him the full keys to the operation. But but th- th- this this move is the first test for him, not just making the decision but how he deals with the decision, how he lives with it, whether he resents the criticism, how the organization moves forward. I was surprised by this because here's the thing, and and I'm not saying that Chris Doyle should never be employed again in any capacity anywhere, but so soon after what happened at Iowa for a job that there are surely plenty of other eminently qualified individuals, I don't know why the Jaguars and why Urban Meyer would, would choose to make a move like that and essentially put their hand right into the middle of the fire. You know, I agree, Mike. This is, uh, you know, if you asked all available assistant coaches at all levels, college, pro, uh, who had would have the chance to move, uh, either their team would let them out, their contract was up, they were unemployed, whatever it was. There's no question at all that everybody would have Urban Meyer very high on the list for a simple reason. That Urban Meyer, unless he pulls a Nick Saban and quits after two years, Urban Meyer has got at least four years of equity built up there. He's not getting fired, even if he has two really bad years at the beginning, even a third bad year. He is going to be in that job for a little while, unless, again, he chooses to go. So what does that mean? That means that job security is excellent if you're on the Jacksonville Jaguars coaching staff right now. So if you're getting recruited by the Jaguars, you could say to your wife, hey, look, we're going to be there a while. We can put the kids in school. We can do this. It's a great place to live, great town, all that. And I agree with you, Mike. My first thought was that, first of all, not only will he get a lot of questions from people like us. But I wonder also if he's going to get questions from players on his own team. You know, word travels fast in the in the player fraternity and the coaching fraternity. Are you saying that I didn't even look at their roster? Are there no players from Iowa on the Jacksonville roster? Would they maybe not even consider choosing Iowa players in the draft? I mean, it's just... It opens a can of worms that I don't understand why why it was open. Well, and the questions already have begun. We've got excerpts of the press conference during which the Chris Doyle questions did emerge and Myers' responses. Here's some of it. Yeah, I've known Chris for uh, close to 20 years. Our relationship goes back to when I was at Utah, and he was the number one strength coach. And really, he, he was doing sports performance before sports performance became uh, – uh, uh, a high priority in, in college sports. And so I've known him, I've studied him. Uh, we've had a relationship. Uh, I vetted him thoroughly. He had no reservations hiring him based on the allegations and, and what happened at Iowa and, and why hire him instead of going in a different direction. Oh, sure. I, 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 I vet everyone on our staff. And like I said, the relationship goes back close to 20 years and a lot of hard questions asked, a lot of vetting involved. And, uh, with the, with all our staff, but uh, uh, we 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 did a very good job vetting that one. So you're confident there's not going to be any issues. Yeah, they're all they're, better, they're very confident. Did you have to get Shad's permission to hire him, Chris Doyle? Uh, Shad was involved with our our high end uh, hires, and uh, he was very he was involved. And are you at all concerned that him being in the building will? impact your ability to, to attract free agents? Uh, I, if I was, I wouldn't have hired him. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll explain that if, if that becomes a, a question. Uh, the one thing I'm very confident is that 
I would imagine within a year or two, we'll have the best sports performance team in the National Football League. One Iowa player on the Jaguars roster currently, cornerback Greg Mabin. Um, I, I, it, you're right, Peter. Word travels fast. Players know each other. Word's going to get around. There were serious allegations made regarding Chris Doyle. Now, he denied making the comments, but the end result was an investigation that didn't name names per se, but it found that there was belittling of players, that there were racially inappropriate comments made, and Doyle left with a $1.1 million buyout. So uh, a, a, a challenging situation, and again, Urban Ma- and and it's just amazing how this all just kind of gets forgotten once a guy gets put on a pedestal by an NFL team, and it was clear from the get-go this is the guy that Shad Khan wanted to hire. But whether it was at Florida, whether it was the stuff that happened at Ohio State, there's always been just something on the fringe that Urban Meyer's been able to keep just beyond arm's length. But that that makes it even more curious that he would welcome onto his staff someone who's been involved in a controversy because then that that will get people like us to say, well, let's look at some of the people Urban Meyer has surrounded himself with over the years. Yeah, it, it, you know, Mike, the one other thing is you were saying that, you know, a head coach in a new situation, what what this said to me, this hire also said to me is that look, um, I'm going to do things my way and I'm going to hire the people I want to hire. I think he made some excellent hires. The one hire that really stood out to me was Joe Cullen, uh, the defensive line coach at Baltimore, um, who he hired as his defensive coordinator, who, you know, in my opinion, and he's been very upfront with this, he had a well-publicized battle with alcohol early in his career and met with Roger Goodell, talked to him, had that weird incident in the drive through restaurant. And look, the bottom line in the whole thing is people ought to get a chance to rebuild their lives. And I totally get it. Joe Cullen has taken that chance. He's been an absolute total model citizen since that incident. He's met with Goodell on several occasions. But this just really is different to me because this is very fresh in our memories. And, and as I said, so many people would be after this job. It's just, I, I think it's a very odd hire to me, Mike, because it could, it could deter Urban Meyer. If it deters him from recruiting even two or three players, and, and maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. But if it deters him from recruiting players, basically, what? why is he there? And, and you know, the reality is, and, and this gets into that same type of confidence, delusion, hubris that a great quarterback has, a great coach believes he's always going to find a way to say yeah. the right thing, put out the fires, and ultimately rely on that person who brings a certain element of controversy to assist in the broader cause of making the team as good as it is can be so we'll see how that plays out for the Jaguars they've got a busy day today they'll be checking out Trevor Lawrence as he throws for scouts before he has surgery on his non-throwing shoulder hi I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports